Yeah. Is that vicious? Yeah. Is that a beer? Oh, it's a beer. Is that a beer? Let's get going, shall we? Simpsons rule. Oh, did I just start rubbing this out? No. Good thing my shirt's like really good. Yeah. Okay. Today we're going to cover the second of the um, two methods of approximation that are part of this topic. Okay. Now, just to jog your memories, okay? The whole idea of integration and areas under curves. We've already looked at two ways of approximating area. Okay. So the first way was um, Riemann's way, which was um, you know making uh, there we go <coughs> rectangles out of this area, and then you know Riemann did his smart thing, which was uh, take that area, take those bunch of rectangles, and use limits and all that kind of thing to get an exact area. Okay. Uh, and the way we learned yesterday was trapezoidal rule. Which is taking that area and using a, a trapezium to get in the ballpark. Okay. Now, rectangles, trapezia. I actually looked it up, by the way. It is it is trapezia. Um, the disadvantage for them in terms of using them to approximate areas under curves, curves. Um, the problem is they don't have curves. They are straight. Okay. Now, how many kinds of shapes do we know with curves that we know how to work out the area of? Circles Spheres. and and circles basically. You said <laughs> shapes, not polygons. Yeah, okay, well. No, circles are polygons. You, you said shapes, not two D shapes. <laughs> so a sphere would be surprisingly not useful to me when I try and work out the area under a curve. We will get to volumes later, but uh, it's basically circles. Basically circles. Now I suppose you could like do circles or part of circles, that kind of thing. Like that kind of looks like a a, a segment, I guess. Uh, but you start to have to think about the maths that under, undergirds like measuring circles, radii measure. Okay, um, it is way more trouble than it's worth. Okay, so here's what uh, when you've got a curved area, right? Here's what mathematicians thought of, as a better way to get at this area um, with a curved shape. Now the simplest kind of curved shape after circles, I don't think we know that, is a parabola. Okay, now how would you use a parabola? How would you, like, we, we sort of get, okay, you make a bunch of rectangles, okay, or you make a trapezium or a, tra a bunch of trapezia, okay, but how would you put a parabola on a, um, on a shape like this? So this is log x, okay, and I said before that um, it can be integrated, but it's kind of, a, it's hard to do, you need more sophisticated methods. So can we get an approximation, okay? Well, we've been talking about function values so far, right? So here, for instance, I've got two function values. And that would be all I need to make one trapezium, okay? And then I can get an approximation, okay? But I'm going to need more than just these two function values to draw a parabola that's going to be close to this kind of area. Can anyone tell me why? Why am I going to need more than just these two? <coughs> what you think about, uh, go back to, let's see, was it year seven or year eight? Year eight, I think. Um, you learned that if I give you any three points, okay, you should be able to draw a circle and only one circle that goes through those three points. Can anyone tell me why? Three members. It's in year eight because that's when you learn chord properties. What's the chord property that it takes a value? I thought it was construction. Yes, but you need a you need a chord property to use the construction. Mm. Uh, if you imagine, you know, if these three points are going to be in circumference, right? Uh, if you make that a chord and then you make another chord, let's like, say, here, okay? The perpendicular bisector of a chord should go through the center of the circle, right? So if I draw a um, perpendicular bisector, like, say, this one, like so, there's one, and do the other one, so it looks like something like there. Okay, where those two perpendicular bisectors meet ought to be the center, and there's only one of them, right? It doesn't meet anywhere else. It can't possibly meet anywhere else. Okay, so then I think if you remember um, under constructions, you get your compass out, you chuck it on there because that's the center, and then you should be able to measure out all of those distances should be the same because they all should be radii, right? And then you know, off off your second goes or whatever. Okay? Now parabolas are the same, okay? And I wonder if you can think about why. I'm not going to address it, but you need three points to uniquely define a parabola, just like you need three points to uniquely define a circle. Okay? 
obviously, if I just had two points, these two, okay, I could draw not just a few, but I could draw an infinite number of parabolas that all pass through those two points. And some of them will look nothing like our curve. Okay? So I need one more point, the midpoint. Okay? Now, what value does that correspond to on the x-axis? How, how do I find the midpoint? I want, I want the, the midpoint, not the distance between the, right? So I'm going to take the average, the midpoint will be a plus b on 2. Right, now that corresponds to, so now I've got three function values, okay? Now, if I can draw a parabola that goes through these, and you'll need to get your, um, maybe if you've got another color there, that would be helpful, what would it look like? Well, I'm guessing, if I went through these three, it might look something like this. Uh, I don't know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get there, okay? Um, now this parabola, if you have to think about it, right? To the left and to the right uh, of our interval, it looks nothing like the function that I'm actually trying to approximate, right? But I don't care, why not? Yeah, the only part I'm interested in is the interval where I'm trying to work out the area, namely between A and B, okay? So if in this part, like if I erase all the rest of this, you're like, yeah, that's a... That's a pretty decent approximation. Yes, it might even be closer if you actually draw the, the actual parabola. Okay. So now what I've got is a parabola that goes through those three points, and I want to work out its area instead. Okay. So um, underneath this, I want you to draw yourself a new set of axes, but um, this one, because I've chosen log x, right? It just goes the positive side. This time we're going to need some area over here as well. I'll show you mine in a second. What have I got? Let's see. Okay. So now, I'm saying that this area, which is my exact area which I'm trying to work out, it should be approximately equal to this area, and this is a this is a parabola. It's a completely different shape now, okay? But in the interval that I'm interested in, it's pretty close. Right, now I could go ahead and start thinking about how do I work out this area, and I can use the integration and see where it takes me. Okay? But before I do that, right, all I'm trying to do is work out this area, and I want to make it as simple as possible. That's what all these methods of approximation are about. Okay? So if I can work out an equivalent area, which is algebraically simpler to work out, I might as well, right? because it will make my numbers easier, and I'll get the same value at the end. A definite integral, an area, it's just a number. Yeah? So I just want to get to the end result. So when you have a look at this, right, a, a plus b on 2 and b, they're kind of messy different values, right? Now I can move this around to different places, there's a, a variety of different ways I can do this, but to save you a bit of time, okay, the easiest place to move it is to translate it to the origin. So if I move this uh, midpoint, that a plus b on 2, okay, if I move that so it's sitting on the y-axis, I'll get a new area, something like this, Okay. So I've just moved it over, so I haven't changed its size in any way. Um, but it's going to be easier for me to calculate. Okay. Now, where are all of these places? Okay. Um, usually, with trapezoidal rule, we've been calling the, these subintervals, right? I've got two. We've been calling their height h. Yeah? So I'm going to stick with that convention. We call that h, and we might as well keep them equal. Well, actually, we have to because it's a new point, so that's h is right. Now, if those distances are h, where are my new coordinates, right? Where are my new values where I'm going to get the function values from? Well, minus h and h, right? Because they go left and right of the axis. Okay, so minus h and h and zeros in the middle. Okay. okay, now, let me just stop and make sure you know what we're doing, right? I've done two geometric tricks here to make things simpler for before me before, so that I don't have to mess up with um, terrible algebra. Number one, I've, put, I've used a parabola, okay? That's my first geometric trick, okay? And then I ended with this. Number two, I've moved the parabola so it's somewhere where it's going to be nice and neat for me, okay? From here, there's, there's nothing really else that I can do in terms of 
geometric trickery, um, I'm done. Now I just have to have a look at the algebra. Okay. So now that I have to think about algebra, I'm going to give this um, parabola a name since it's a parabola, and this is f. I'm going to call it p. Okay. Now I don't know what parabola it is, so I have to give it a, um, a general sort of form. Okay. It could be anything, right? Depending on what function we feed it. Okay. Now you'll notice I've got capital A, B, C. Why is that? Because I've already got my lower A and B as the balance, so don't mess them up, don't confuse them with each other. Yes. Approximation. Yeah, so this area underneath log x is approximately equal to this area under this parabola and this parabola. These two are the same, but they're only approximately equal to that. What do you think is going to be exact? Okay, it, it will be exact in two cases. Number one, if, it's, if what I'm approximating is itself a parabola, right? Because you're like, replace a parabola with a parabola, you get the same thing. Number two, interestingly, if you have a cubic function, and we'll have a look at this after we derive this as well. If you start with a cubic function and you approximate it with a parabola, you'll get the exact area back. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if you can work out why that is. We'll derive it later. But if it is any other kind of function, okay, if it's, um, if it's a, a log function, an exponential, if it's a hyperbola, anything else like that, you get close but there'll always be a little bit of error. You cannot exactly match up the curvature. Okay? Um, so there will be a little bit of margin. Okay? Good question. All right, now, sorry, where was I? This is my parabola now. Okay? So can I work out what is the area underneath this? Okay? Uh, let me get rid of this one. Um, I now want to work out what is, um, well I can say this area is exactly equal to, you know, from A to B of F, okay? But now I'm going to change it in much the same way as with substitution, this is why we did that first, okay? I'm going to say the area is approximately equal to, now, the boundaries and the function um, have both changed. I'm still with respect to X though, because it's still in this kind of graph, right? So what are my new boundaries?